Well, it's a beautiful fall day to talk about plants that feed the birds for fall and winter. And I'm with Mary at Farmington Gardens. I can't believe the plethora of plants that you picked for us today. There are a lot of plants, ground covers, shrubs, trees, many things, that fruit that the birds like and yeah. will attract the birds. So let's just dive in and I just love this one. I don't think I've ever seen a cotone aster with that large a flower, a fruit. This is a cotone aster cranberry and the fruit absolutely um, looks like cranberries. Gets about three feet tall and up to six feet wide. It is an evergreen. Beautiful, beautiful. And then a new holly. I think that hollies are so much fun to have because they have those beautiful berries. It's just real, really for the season. This one is Castle Spire. It's a new um, product from Proven Winners. It is an evergreen plant. And I believe this one gets to about five feet tall. And then do we need a pollinator to make the berries? You do. The pollinator is called Castle Wall. So similar names, that right. would be the male. Ah. Yep. And you know, an old favorite here is um, dogwood, the red twig dogwood, and those have nice berries too. They do have wonderful berries. Um, these are white right now, but they will certainly turn to a very nice translucent blue as the weather cools ah. and the birds love them. Yeah, beautiful. This is a deciduous, of course. And beautiful color. The bark is so pretty for exactly. winter. Exactly. Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then we have a trio here. If you can talk about these three right here. Sure. Um, starting lowest here, this is a salal, and this is a native to Oregon. This is an evergreen, and you can see berries that are very soft, kind of like blueberries. And then this is a wintergreen, Galtheria. This is an evergreen, and it has beautiful berries. These can be edible by humans also, and the birds love that. And then this is the beautiful oh, so Perfusion Beauty Berry. This is a deciduous shrub, um, loves the sun, has these beautiful, beautiful lavender um, berries. Sometimes they'll stay on all winter and in your garden and oftentimes the birds snatch them right off. Yeah, and that's so unusual. They have purple berries. I mean, we know we have other colors, but to see that purple is just so unusual for our gardens. Very pretty. Ah, and so we have a snowberry, which that beautiful white berry is so pretty. And this too is another native to Oregon. This is a deciduous shrub. These berries oftentimes will last through the winters, again, unless the birds find them and then they'll be gone in a short amount of time. Uh -huh. Very nice shrub. That is pretty. And another unusual one, white berries that stay yes, on. Yes, really exactly. Unusual. Exactly. And then for us that want a tree for the garden, it's not just shrubs that uh, feed the birds, but there are some that hold on their berries for the winter, fall, winter in a tree form. And this is the crab tree, and I think, I mean a crab apple, um, Indian Magic is the Ooh. name of this crab apple. And it has the beautiful red little apple berries and the birds and squirrels like these. And this is about its maximum size right now. It's about a 10, 10 footer. And what's nice about this crab apple, I think we all get scared about crab apples. It's, oh, it's gonna make such a mess. You got those big apples. But these are actually so small, like an apple berry. And if they don't drop, they'll just kind of dry right on the tree. They do. and. I Truly, from my experience, the birds and the squirrels will get to these so fast, there's not going to be anything left on the ground to clean up. <laughs> and there's another tree here, too, and it's a dogwood. Our dogwoods, um, they, people I don't think realize, I did a couple things, Judy. There oh, happens look, to be a blossom. A <laughs> yeah, there's a, kind of a leftover blossom, and that very center is the part that turns into the berry. And then they're, um, they can be as big as golf balls, and the dimpling kind of comes out. They kind of have a yellowish flesh inside. They get soft as they get larger. I can tell you from personal experience, the birds, this would probably be the tree that they come to first. Ah. Very nice. And the same thing, very few berries will drop to the ground. Ah. They'll eat them. That is nice because it's one more thing to pick up and so if you feed them, that's great. Exactly. <laughs> You're right. And then I love the story on this one. Tell us about this one. The Chilean wintergreen. Um, this is a pernetia. It is an evergreen. Uh, at a quick glance, you might think that it's our native huckleberry, but it's yeah. not. Um, has small white flowers followed by these just lovely pink berries. And as the berries get larger, probably almost marble size, they'll drop into your hands. That's when you know they are ripe. They're edible for humans. And if you just gently bite them between your two front teeth, that tastes just like cotton candy. No. It's a delicious, yeah, absolutely. It's a delicious berry. Yes, yes. Oh, I love those little tidbits because you never would think it would taste like cotton candy. No, no, and it does. It's a delicious berry. Uh, so humans or birds. Ah, oh, that's great. Well, you know, we can go on and on. There's so many plants here at Farmington Gardens that feed the birds and the wildlife. And we didn't even get into which birds love which fruit and berries. So really, it's um, a lifelong thing to do to um, enjoy your gardens just a different way for fall and, and winter time. Very 
much so. Um, there are a lot of good populations that our Audubon Society puts out, yeah. and that'll help you decide if there's a particular bird you want to attract, what plant you should plant for uh, that. Well, thank you for all the information. It's been great. You're so very welcome. It's been my pleasure.